Podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Listen to other great tech podcasts at www.techpodcasts.com. Tech Webcast, streamed from our brains to our mouths, to your ears, to your brain. It's like our brains are holding hands, brain hands. That doesn't really make sense, but Tech Webcast does. Tech stuff, gadgets, games. Come and wander around geek heaven with us. Tech Webcast, here, now. Holding Brain Hands. And welcome to episode 275 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 8th of February 2014. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday and rebroadcast on Aussie Tech Heads on Thursday evenings at 7 pm. Please rate us on iTunes and like us at facebook.com forward slash tech webcast. And your hosts today are Brad, Steve, Jen, Paul, and myself, Andrew. And we have a very special guest today, Stephen Haywood from The Tech Buzz. G'day, Brad. How are you, mate? G'day, Andrew. How are you, mate? I am very good on this Tech Hands Tech Webcast Day. It is a very hands uh, approach podcast. Very much. Cool little new intro there. Loving it. Yeah, Jennifer requested that, so I, I said, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll play it. Very good. Uh, how's your week been, mate? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty, pretty busy. We're working on... A number of things uh, with the the app that I've got. So there's a lot happening, and yeah, just trying to get ready for um, South by Southwest at the start of March. So yeah, lots of busy things, but it's all good stuff. Good stuff, mate. Can't wait for that. Uh, also yeah. to, uh, on from getting any with it. Welcome, Jennifer. Hi. Thank you for uh, that doing that awesome intro. I'm so glad that you played it with the brain hands. We're <laughs> holding brain hands. I've never held brain hands before. Me either. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> uh, Paul, welcome back, mate. Oh, hey. Good. Uh, oh, that didn't go well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm here. Yeah. I'm, I'm focused now. You got a good phone? Uh, yeah, it's on the way. It's one of those red Nexus 5s. Oh, my God. And... <laughs> Okay. Nice. Uh, nice, yeah. I'm excited yeah. for you. <laughs> all, all I heard was red necks. I'm thinking, hang on, you got a red necks phone? Can you say that on radio? <laughs> <laughs> red neck radio, yeah. Um, Steve, <laughs> wait, mate. Well, happy birthday for tomorrow, by the way, too. Oh, yeah, thanks. Awesome. And, so, uh, hey, Joe, week been, mate? Oh, it's been pretty good. Uh, a little bit busy. Um, Trying to, uh, it's like I, for the last two days, I've been getting my own show ready and then uh, looking at some of the, uh, the news stories for your show. So trying to get all that inputted for today. Good stuff. And how's your week been, Jennifer? I've got to ask you. Oh, my week has been wonderful. It has uh, been really eventful in regards to work and a lot of good stuff happening right now with work. So no. great week. Thank you. Good stuff. And how's your podcast? You know, I ended up taking off this week and we're starting back up next week, uh, mainly because I was really swamped with my job that pays money. <laughs> so, and that, that takes pre precedence, you know. So, that's always uh, inconvenient. Right, right. I like money too. <laughs> I know you know what I mean. <laughs> yep. Uh, I've got Steve from the Tech Bath. Welcome, Steve. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Good stuff, mate. What have you been up to last time we spoke? Uh, just busy, uh, studio upgrades, um, work the whole nine, you know, uh, nice. you got a new show coming on, mate. Uh, yeah, I, I have a new show coming up. Uh, we don't have a launch date for it, but it's, it's something that uh, a bunch of people have been asking me to do and I've just been looking for the right person to co-host it with me. And, and I fortunately I found them. So I don't know how it's going to go off, but well, you know, we'll see. What's the Can name of the show? Can you tell us what, it, what, it's, what it's called and, what, and that sort of stuff? So um, I am from Western PA, so we like our guns out here. and We like to hunt. We like to fish and, and, that, and that sort of thing. And so, uh, you know, the guys that I hang out with a lot, they're, they're like, uh, you know, so, oh, they don't take your guns, my constitutional right. So we actually created a show called My Constitutional Right. And so basically the whole show is about just uh, educating people 
um, and uh, letting people know why they need to vote and why why they should pay attention to politics and why things happen in the world the way they do and and cut through all the BS that some of the other uh, folks are putting out there and all the conspiracy theories and present some some facts and and give people proof to back that stuff up and kind of go down. It, it's it's a huge political show. So if you're not a politic if you're not politics fan, it's not a show for you. All right, that, that, that'd be a really interesting concept as a show. Actually, I mean, you see that sort of stuff, and and as you said, Steve, with you know, hey, don't take my guns, and you see that like in a five minute YouTube, often enough, but it's not often that you actually get a show that's a vehicle where you can sort of revisit it every week or or every month or whatever, and go through what was said and then follow up that and have someone else on. So that, that that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, what we're looking to do is to get. Uh, local senators and congressmen and invite them. Um, I've talked to a few of them and they were talking about coming on the show. So I think this is a good opportunity for folks because right away, everybody's ready to blame and hang a congressman or hung, you know, hang somebody that they really don't know what they're thinking. So basically give them a platform to explain themselves in, in a, in a no bull crap, uh, you know, scenario and, and basically allow people to really ask them questions and, and, and drill them, you know, uh, kind of like the hot seat, so to speak. So I don't know, we, you know we're, we're going to, we're going to try to see how it goes and, uh, we'll see where it goes right. from there. All right, let's jump to the news and Jennifer will come back and have a chat with Steve. All right, let's get into the news. Uh, the first story is coming from Engadget, and it is about Comcast. Comcast is bringing its online Olympics coverage to Xfinity TV subscribers. So, you know, by its nature, conventional TV offers limited coverage of large sports events such as the Olympics. But uh, Comcast is actually providing that coverage um, of the Sochi Olympics to its Xfinity TV subscribers. So if you are a Comcast user and you have Xfinity TV, you are in great shape. <laughs> Moving on to the next story. Uh, another one from Engadget, and this is about Android. Android search update lets you pick video on-demand providers in Google Now. So there has been a software update to Google Now that rolled out, and it uh, has, it's, they're calling it kind of a bug fix, but I never noticed this particular buzz, but I guess we'll talk about this after the news. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so they um, inc basically... Uh, fixed their Google Now in regards to telling you uh, the different TV shows that are on and the on-demand providers. Uh, so they also added a few other tweaks in the latest Google Now update. So if you haven't noticed it yet, be certain to check it out. And if you're not using Google Now and you're an Android user, you're missing out. You really need to check out Google Now. All right, moving right along to the next story by Mac Rumors. Apple fuels iWatch rumors by seeking exercise physiologist to lead fitness tests. So Apple is looking to hire an exercise physiologist uh, to oversee cardiovascular fitness and energy expenditure tests at its main headquarters. And this new position was posted on the job board this past Thursday. And I'll read the position. It, it sounds like an awesome role. I wish that I had this qual these qualifications. But uh, it says, design and run user studies related to cardiovascular fitness and energy expenditure, including calories burned, metabolic rate, aerobic fitness level, measurement, and tracking and other key physiological measurements. Candidate will be knowledgeable about the physiological effects being measured and how to avoid potential inaccuracy and experimental error due to DOE flaws and or reference monitor, i.e. metabolic cart, etc. usage issues. The role will need to apply relevant knowledge to the design of products and their testing slash validation through their user studies. So judging by this, it sounds like they're hiring someone to come on board to um, you know, get the get ready, get the eye watch ready, right? <laughs> and then also recently they hired the sleep expert Roy uh, Raymond uh, from he came from Phillips and um, Michael O'Reilly, who was a chief medical officer from um, Pulse um, 
and they brought them on board as well. In addition, uh, Tim Cook was hiring, um, let me see, who was it here? Oh, it was the former Yves St. Laurent CEO, Paul Deneve. Uh, and, you know, so if you're hiring somebody like uh, Yves St. Laurent, a CEO from there, then, you know, they're interested in something with fashion. So it all kind of comes together, and hence we're expecting an iWatch. All right, moving right along, and then we'll talk about that story afterwards. Uh, next story comes from Mac Rumors. iOS 7.1 Beta 5 came out this past Tuesday, April, I'm sorry, February 4th, and this is the fifth version of iOS 7.1. Uh, they did tweak a few things, such as the keyboard. They fixed the shift on the keyboard. Uh, they made it so that you could purchase albums in iTunes Radio. Uh, Siri has some new voices. They have a new Australian voice. They have a new United Kingdom voice. They have uh, a Japanese and a new Chinese voice. There's some calendar fixes, uh, some airdrop changes, and they fixed the iOS 7 jailbreak issue. So uh, we look like it looks like we'll be seeing that maybe, oh, probably sometime in March, we're hoping. And moving right along. Uh, this story comes from TV Tonight, and it is about Melbournes, um, that they need Melbournians, they say here, uh, need to uh, retune their, their TVs, uh, and Sydney will be up next. So this uh, happened this past February 6th. The story came out saying that on the 7th that they'll have to retune their television sets as the par final part of the switch to digital television. The government is reallocating spectrum to be used for other services such as mobile broadband, which means that channels will be moving. So viewers will need to retune their digital TVs, set-top boxes, or digital TV recorders on or after the retune date in their area. The retune has been rolling out around the country for some time, and as worked, it is uh, carried out on the transmission towers. So now it's Melbourne's turn, so this just happened, and then Sydney will be affected on March 18th. And moving right along to the next story, coming from mumbrella.com.au, Quick Flick, Quick Flicks, <laughs> Quick Flicks hires new business development manager. Uh, the movie streaming company Quick Flicks hired Mark Ritchie, who is a former sales and development manager for Bauer Media Group, as its new business development manager. So it looks like uh, he'll bring a lot of experience. For after 14 years of media experience, he has a wealth of knowledge and skills, and he's, uh, they're looking forward to him bringing that talent to Quick Flicks. And moving right along to the next story from The Verge, Apple removes last remaining Bitcoin trading app from the App Store. They've been slowly moving, removing apps uh, Bitcoin apps, that is, from the App Store. And yesterday, it removed an app that they say was the last one. The name of the app is Blockchain. And uh, it has been in the Apple Store for a couple of years. And they're quite upset <laughs> that uh, Apple has removed them, saying that they are demonstrating anti-competitive and capricious uh, nature of App Store policies and that they are clearly focused on preserving Apple's monopoly on payments rather than based on any consideration of the needs and desires of their users. So they're basically saying that they don't want any competition out there. They're maybe rolling out a new payment product themselves, which is why they're pulling all the Bitcoin apps. And... The final story coming from Engadget, Steve Wozniak thinks that Apple should build an Android smartphone. Yes, in an interview with Wired uh, at the Apps World North America Conference, Steve Wozniak revealed that his uh, revealed his belief that Apple should create in a phone that uses Google's Android operating system. According to him, he says. There is nothing that would keep Apple out of the Android market as a secondary phone market. We could play in two arenas at the same time. 
So that would be quite interesting if uh, they were to actually follow suit and do something like that. Of course, this is just Waz saying this, and there's no um, talk of Apple building an Android device. And that wraps it up for the news, Brad. Great stuff, Jennifer. Um, Paul, what's your view on them stories? Uh, with that last one, uh, just thinking of the over the years, the relationship they've had with Google, Apple, um, I, I, I don't see them actually wanting to, I don't know, have a phone that actually essentially gives money to the um, competition. Mm. Uh, I, I don't think they would build an iPhone with Android I think that would be <laughs> attached to it. Really stupid that, if they did. It, would, it would just be weird. <laughs> it, would be. it would be very weird. Very weird indeed, I reckon. It, um, it just feel like one of those, um, you know, those Chinese knockoff <laughs> ones that basically look like an iPhone, but they've got Android on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what it would feel like to me anyway. But um, I agree with you. Yeah, so... <laughs> Um, also, with that Siri stuff, I, you know how they're adding new voices? I think they should go the route of, um, what is it, uh, how TomTom Tom has all these celebrity-type voices as well. Mm -hmm. They can just download. That'd be cool. <laughs> like, oh, I have Homer Simpson Connery. on my GPS at the moment. I'd, I'd okay, love now. to have it on my iPhone when exactly. <laughs> I open <laughs> Siri. I'm on there and Who's on your GPS? Who is um, it? Homer Simpson. Oh, how funny. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> That would I would I love that idea, Paul. That would be awesome. You know, they're adding all these new ones, but you know, if they add in these options as well, it'd be awesome <laughs> that you could just have your entire Siri just do that, <laughs> which would be awesome. Nice one. All right, any uh, any other views, Paul? You want to mention? Uh, no, that's pretty much it for uh, now. <laughs> what about you, uh, Andrew? What about what's your view on these stories, man? Yeah, I just, it's interesting with the iWatch and um, Steve Wozniak talking about, you know, Android should do a watch. Mm. I don't know if it's just me, but I, I don't see a watch as being something that's going to be that big of a deal. I can understand if you want to pair your watch to your phone, maybe. Um, so it says, hey, you've got a notification. But for the most part, my phone beeps when that happens anyway. So I kind of know. And then you're going to have two things beeping, like I've got my iPad, my you know, my phone at home, and one of them beeps, and the other one beeps. I I just I don't think we've it, uh, an iWatch is really going to work until we've got the real estate to put something interesting on them. I mean, we we had these tiny Nokia phones, which we thought were great, and we kept making them smaller until we realised all of a sudden that we actually need a landscape. We need some real estate on these handsets to, to make them usable. So then we made them bigger and then we had the iPhone 4. We made it bigger again and we had the iPhone 5. And then Android or you know um, HTC, Samsung came out and made it even bigger again. But now we've got this mentality that we can go and turn all of this back into a watch with a quarter of the size screen and it's going to be adopted. I can sort of see Google Glass because you've got that sort of hologram in front of you, but until you've got a watch where you can click a button and it pops out with a hologram that's 10 inches wide in front of you, I don't see that the watch is going to be that useful. That's right. just me personally. Any other, any, any other answers about the other stories, Andrew? You want to mention? Um, Melbourne hasn't yet. We're, we're still we're, uh, running our normal digital. We haven't had to do a retune okay. um, as yet. And unrelated, but Steve Wozniak was mentioned, his... Dog died during the week. Oh, no. um, really? Yeah, who he's had since 1998. So, wow. commiserations there. Apparently, he's doing good, and the dog lived a, a good, solid life, and that's that's what happens. But yeah, so there you go. Steve Wozniak's dog, known as Zed, passed away. That's not good. What's it, what brand? What breed of dog was it? Do you know? Or? I have no idea. That's, I know it was a dog. That's not good. Cool. cool. <laughs> I hope that stuff happens. Um, Steve, the tech buzz. What about you? What's your view on that? On these stories? So uh, initially, I was excited about um, Apple with the iWatch, and um, I know a lot of people aren't too sure about this wearable tech, but um, ever since being a Nexus 5 user and not looking back the first time ever on an Android device and, and getting a Pebble watch, I have, no, I have no desire to buy an iWatch because switching back and forth between Google um, and Apple devices. I want something that I can use with either platform. You know, if Apple makes an iWatch, you're locked to their ecosystem and 
it's something that doesn't appeal to me. They can make it the most spectacular watch ever, but somebody like myself who's in all the ecosystems, I don't want to be um, locked and 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 groped by Apple like that. I just I don't. Yeah, mm. I, I agree. I agree with that because I have a Pebble Watch and I I love swapping between my actual phones, Android and iPhone. And the beauty of it is that you can literally switch between Android and your iPhone without having an issue trying to get a new watch or something like that. It just works pretty much. Oh, it, yeah, it's great because like if I'm in a meeting or something. I haven't turned my ringer on my phone since my wife got me the the, the watch for Christmas because um, I get all the notifications on my on my watch. It's awesome. Emails come in, text messages come in. I mean, this is the way notifications were meant to be. I mean, honestly, I didn't know how I was going to like it. I thought maybe it was just like that honeymoon phase, um, but uh, it, it really is. If if you if you haven't had an opportunity to check out a smart watch, I'd encourage anybody to check one out. All right. Any other views, Steve, on them stories? Any other stories you want to mention, mate? <clears throat> um, no, not really. Um, I just, uh, I, th- I think that uh, the the last one, just really with with Steve Wozniak and uh, and Apple building an Android phone, I think that's just asinine. I, I don't think that'll yeah. ever. I think that's was That's Woz's wishful thinking. It is. I agree. That's just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, Chatterbox Live. What about you, mate? Yeah, same thing with the um, Apple using the Android operating system. I, I just don't see them doing it um, because, for instance, like on Android, you you can sideload um, software uh, with bypassing the Google Play Store, and that's how malware and viruses get on the Android platform so easy, and it's prevalent there, something that Apple probably would never allow. And even if they did try to put Android on their uh, iPhone systems or something, they would have probably have to fork it off and close it down because that would affect user experience. So, but I, I just don't see Apple really doing that at all. Mm. All right. Is that all you want to say, Steve? Is that it? Oh, um, yes. uh, let me see. Oh yeah. I'm kind of waiting for the iWatch as well. Uh, okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. What about you, Jennifer? What's your view on them stories? Well, I, I'm kind of excited about the iWatch, even though I I completely agree with Steve in regards to being locked into the ecosystem. I go back and forth between, you know, I carry a 5S. In addition to that, I carry a couple of Android devices. And I'm always going back and forth between these phones. And, and, uh, you know, I really would like something that's not locked into an ecosystem. But at the same time, I am a bit of a fangirl. And when Apple provides, you know, creates a beautiful new product, I'm like, ooh, Shiny thing. Let me <laughs> let me go buy that. So, you know, I'm I'm kind of excited that they're working on that. I really hope it's a beautiful piece of art, and I'm sure it will be very classy when it comes out. And I think that's what attracts me the most. Uh, and hopefully, it will be something innovative. I also agree with Andrew. Is that I'm I'm waiting I'm waiting as well for that holographic image to pop out of the watch. That's what I want. And you know, it will be a few years down the road before we see something like that. But I, I certainly hope it's in our lifetime. I, I'm sure it will be. But uh, that's that's definitely what I would like. Um, and then in regards to uh, the retuning, so what's going on in Melbourne? So, uh, so you guys, changing, yeah, they're just changing uh, frequencies for for, for for radios and stuff. Apparently, through different things. Yeah, basically, we have the analog TV, and in Melbourne, we're effectively getting rid of analog TV entirely. So you'll need to have a digital tuner in your television. So the old four three TVs, you'll oh, need yeah. a digital set top box to use it. So we're doing away with the analog channel and the reason for that is because majority of people have digital now anyway but as soon as they get rid of that analog that opens up all of those channels for things like as as the news story said it means that they can use those frequencies for things like internet traffic it gives them a lot more flexibility for services you know maybe not ambulance and fire but other services that aren't quite that important but may benefit from their own channel so um Mm. You know, when I say channel, I don't mean channel as in sending information to watch on your TV just for the for the viewers, but actual channel for sending out data and sending out content and so forth. So it just means we'll free up a whole bunch of space on our channel spectrum and, you know, it gives us the ability then to do other things and become a part of the yeah. you know, digital age. I want a, uh, I want, I want a Rage 24-hour-7 music channel, uh, Andrew. 
You know, rage. <laughs> <laughs> rage. rage. I want Again. Yeah. Yeah. I don't It'd know. It'd be good about to return that. that. What's yeah. that, Paul? I don't know if I want to watch Rage at that, that you know, midday Rage doesn't quite work for me. Rage for me is sort of like, you know, late at night, you know, you've got a, a beer in one hand and you've just finished some nachos yeah, or something. <laughs> um, Paul, did you check out Quick Flicks at all, mate? Not yet. <laughs> I haven't got around to looking at Quick Flicks yet. It's going to have a um, story, bad. What did you think about that story about hiring that new guy on there? I think you're going to add some pretty good content. I hope they do. Like, I want to see them have the amount of content that they have on Netflix. Like, if they have the exact caliber of content, then I may actually make the switch to Quick Flix. Um, but I'm still waiting for that sweet spot for me to go <laughs> to Quick Flix. Oh, they're always adding good stuff each week. Oh, I know, I know. But, you know, I'm waiting till they actually get to that level. Yeah, yeah. Before I actually... Switch. It kind of depends on licensing, I guess. I mean, yeah. obviously, we've got a lot less people than America has, so yeah. I, I don't know exactly how it would work. But hopefully, the licensing is you know based on per capita and all those sorts of things, and we can get a model that works for us because it would be great if we could have a lot of that content, Paul. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you think, you think Netflix would come to Australia, Paul? It looks like it. They're t- discussing it. In 2014, but obviously fo- things like Foxtel and all that sort of stuff are uh, complaining to the ACCC to make them, you know, not come into Australia <laughs> because yeah. they would seriously destroy Foxtel <laughs> in one f- swoop. They would. Um, so, yeah, they're trying to protect themselves, I would say, at this yeah, point. I agree. I think Foxtel's got, got, their all, got the rights to everything, haven't they? Well, they're the only, they have no competition, so they can do whatever they like, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. And I think just just quickly, one of the problems with Netflix coming to Australia, as great as it would be, is they could effectively move in here and run at less than profit margin, run at zero, um, you know, ability, uh, and basically knock, as you just said, Paul, knock Foxtel out of the water. Netflix is still making, you know, bucket loads of money in the States. They, they knock Foxtel out and then they lift the price up. So it just means they've got all the options in the world. Um, and as you said, Paul, you know, the ACCC need to look at these things and make sure that if they do come here, that they create an environment that's, you know, s- stable for the existing competition. Mm. Yeah. Good answer, Andrew. And uh, hopefully it will happen one day. But Quick Flix is here, so I'll say use that. Uh, who's, who, who do we have on today, Andrew, with the guest? Steve from Tech Buzz. Yeah, What's we up? do. We've got Steve Haywood here from <laughs> the Tech Buzz. How are you doing today, Steve? Hey, Steve. Welcome, mate. Good to have you on, buddy. I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. What have you been up to? Um, yeah, just like like we said earlier, I've just been uh, doing some uh, studio overhauls. I was running uh, some SDI cable today and, and busy with work and all that nonsense. All right. Any questions, Andrew, for Steve? Oh, Andrew? Andrew, are you there? No question. Yeah, yes. yeah, sorry, what, what was that? Any questions? <laughs> um, I've just been having a look. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the, the new show that you've got going on, um, the, the political stuff with, as you said, um, sort of talking about you know, people's rights to, to bear arms and you know, constitutional rights and things like that. Is there any other shows... Um, around that sort of go into that kind of depth and, and are you getting any sort of media push around that? Are you going to sort of put out some releases and um, see what comes from that? And when does the actual show start? Do you know a date? You know, we, we really haven't gotten a date together um, just yet. We know we're going to probably start it here in the next couple of weeks, but um, I, I don't want people to get the impression that it's just all about a bunch of gun nuts getting together and talking about guns and things like that. It's more or less like, at least here in the States, you know, we get a lot of people that the media has deemed low information voters. And those are people that pay only attention to the presidential candidates in our country. And so if they're registered as a a Republican or a Democrat, they'll go into the voting process and they'll vote for their respective party and they'll just go right down the line without knowing anything about the congressman that they're voting in. And they'll just vote them just because of their, you know, what were their stances, if they're a Republican or a Democrat. And we want to try to encourage voters in, instead of getting angry when these congressmen do something that they don't like to pay more attention at the beginning and see what some of these guys are standing for. And 
and really get to understand, you know, what the process is all about, because otherwise you're going to get people in office that in a year or two, you're going to find out that, wow, I really don't want that person here. And so that's kind of like our approach on just about, you know, the whole show. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, I just think really I just think we've got too much of that here in the you know in the United States. I mean, we watch people turn on the president. We watch people turn on congressmen, and and I think it's just it's just uh, uh, because people aren't informed and nobody really knows about this stuff. And I'm not saying we have all the answers by any means. Don't get me wrong, but I just think it'd be a nice platform for people that really want to learn more about the political side of, of, of our country and, and find out about different things it, because I, I don't have the answers for this, but my co-host that's going to come on, I mean, he lives and breathes this stuff. So um, I think it's going to be very informative and I think it's going to be something that is unique and it's something that I think everybody could weigh in and have their opinion on. It's going to be really interesting to see where the show actually goes. Obviously the first few episodes will start to, you know, mold the, I guess you know, the direction that the show actually takes. So it'll be really interesting to, to check it out. I'll, I'll certainly be listening in. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a video version of the Tech Buzz, isn't it, Steve? If it's a video podcast? Yes, it, it'll be in It'll be in high def. It'll be available. Yeah, you guys can watch it um, as well as there'll be audio as well. Sweet, mate. All right. Uh, Chatterbox Live, any questions for Steve? Uh, yeah, I uh, got quite a few. Uh, actually, I, ha I had somebody come in to uh, uh, Twitter me uh, because I was uh, – one of my shows I had, like, where I switched a uh, hardware switcher. He goes, hey, just check out um, Steve Buzz's, or, or excuse me, Steve Haywood's um, show. Uh, you covered, like, a new hardware switcher. Um, also, I noticed I think you also have some uh, new sponsors. I think AJA, I believe. Yeah, uh, we, we got uh, some new sponsors, but uh, I think he's referring to this last uh, Tuesday. So my co-host uh, on broadcast now, uh, the show that we talk all about broadcasting and how folks can get into the internet broadcasting scene, podcasting, that sort of thing. Uh, he had actually invented a hardware controller for software switchers like Wirecast and vMix and, and some of the other platforms that are out there, but it's universal. So it'll also work on any hardware switcher like uh, the ATEM, but it looks like a TriCaster controller. So um, he has an Indiegogo up, and uh, he's not because he's trying to make money on this, but he's he's trying to put it out to the users to get it at a really, really discounted rate because it's cheaper to buy things in bulk. So if he can offer it uh, as an Indiegogo, you know, you could get it for six, seven hundred dollars as opposed to paying maybe twelve to fifteen hundred dollars for the actual unit because the buttons on this thing cost like fifteen bucks a piece. So uh, it's, it's very, very pricey. And so. Um, you know, he just wanted to put it out there and and uh, help some of the internet broadcasters have a way to control devices like Wirecast. I know you use Wirecast uh, yeah. with it, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice one. Yeah, I think it, uh, his website opened today too. Uh, uh, supposedly, it's 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 going to be up for sale. I think on his website right now, or yeah, uh, up on his Indiegogo, um, he has he has a uh, website. You can you can follow him at NetNutMike on oh. on Twitter. And uh, he has all that information. And uh, I believe the software, it, like if you don't want to purchase it, like the controller, you can actually take, I believe, a MIDI controller of some sort and you can actually um, uh, take his software. He's going to put it out for free and you can program a MIDI controller to control your devices as well. Um, all right, Steve, um, can you tell me uh, anything new that you've done with your studio? Of course, I know you got a new show. Um, anything else uh, that that's going on? Any changes or anything like that since last time? Yes, yeah. yeah. So what we've been doing, we were we were kind of just talking about um, uh, the, the the upgrades and things like that that have been going on with uh, you know, the show broadcast now that Mike was talking about. Well, one of the big things that I did in my studio is just recently. Um, you guys know I use Wirecast, but then I also purchased a TriCaster Forty. And um, then I did an upgrade to a 460, which then allows me to do SDI and have a higher quality, uh, be able to basically send out the TV if need be. And um, one of the big things with that is SDI. Well, SDI is very expensive if you've ever looked into it. And uh, you had asked about um, the, the new sponsor that I got, which was AJA Video Systems, where they make a lot of capture cards that you can use with Wirecast and, and other type devices. Um, 
one of the things that uh, I needed was mini converters to convert HDMI to HDSDI. And they're like, oh, we can help you with that. So um, I ended up, because uh, these mini converters would have costed me close to three to $4,000 for the amount that I needed. So it, it was really, really cool for them to jump on board. And since um, I use some of their other devices, you know, it was just fitting. Um, they make good products. And when I was out in California on business, I got to tour their facility and, and things like that. So uh, very, very good company. Um, so that's what I've been up to, uh, just oh. kind of rearranging the studio and things like that. Good stuff. Um, Jennifer, any questions for Steve? Yes, I do, definitely. Steve, first, I, I've got to say, I've been looking at the picture of your studio on your website, and it looks outstanding. It just it puts my little studio to shame, which isn't quite a studio. It's just a couple of computers and a mic. So uh, I, I love it. And I want to know how you got your start in broadcasting. Were you involved with old media before coming over to the new media arena? Is that how you got your start? No, believe it or not, I'm I'm 100% self-taught. Everything that I've done in the studio, everything on the broadcasting side of things, just watching and studying different broadcasters, learning do's and don'ts. Um, one of the big things that I started doing was live casting, just getting on camera and just helping people with computer problems because I'm a geek at heart and I love fixing computers. And if I don't even know the answer, I was fortunate enough I had some people around me that were that were able to answer those questions. So we'd just get on Skype and just like we are now, but not in a podcast form, but just in a kind of like hanging out like what people are doing with Google Hangouts these days. And we streamed it. And so people started coming in, but then they started saying, Well, you need to you need to make a set time and do an actual show hmm. so so you can get people to come in. And so that was all new to me, you know, trying to do something, but I wanted to be more like TV. I wanted to, to run an intro. I wanted to go to my ads. I wanted to come in, take 15 minute breaks and be, or take a break every 15 minutes. Right. Just like you went on TV. And so I, I challenged myself to not do any editing and just go, I mean, anybody that watches it's live to take, man, we, we don't go back and edit or anything. And one of the wow. things that I wanted to be able to do is, is produce it myself and host it myself, switch cameras, set the audio, do all that stuff. Um, and so that's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, five years, almost six years later, here I am and uh, still learning, always learning from different people. But mm -hmm. that's pretty much how I got my start, just watching different broadcasters, learning and uh, making mistakes along the way. Is there uh, anyone that, oh, sorry, Brad, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, so I was going to say, but that's very cool. Uh, I wonder, so, is there anyone who inspired you? Yeah, absolutely. Um a lot of people, you know, you know the man Leo Laporte. Oh yeah, he's, he was a um, he was a big inspiration just because he's been in the business for so long. And I think it, it, anybody that says oh, I can't look up to a guy like that, they're they're just lying because the man's got a wealth of knowledge. Whether you agree with different points that he has or just who he is in general, um, the man is very talented on the mic. He knows how to use it. And uh, also Kim Commando, I'm a big uh, Kim Commando fan and. Uh, She's just, she's just really, really, really good. She's got very good production value if you've ever watched any of the stuff that she does of her live radio show. And so different people like that, just watching. I mean, I'll sit, my wife will laugh because I'll sit and watch CNN, not because I care about what they're saying, but I watch the production value of how they're switching cameras or how they're doing different things. And I study stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm, as, I'm as nerdy as they come, man. <laughs> I mean, that's, I'll watch a show, and that's what I pick out, right? Yeah. No, that's good. That is good. You you want to perfect your your talents there, and and you're always learning, so that's fantastic. And yeah, I'm I'm a, I've always been a huge Leo fan since the old ZD TV days, and he's a great guy, and I've learned a lot from him as well. So um, glad that glad that you listed him as one of the guys. So very cool. And then one more question. Uh, so what what different shows do you have right now? So for the p person that does not know anything about you, you're at the techbuzz.net. And what shows do you guys put on? Right. So we, we've had the techbuzz.net, which has been what I've been known for for the last almost five, six years. But we recently, it's still the tech buzz, but we recently also rebranded in a sense called the TTB network. Oh. So it's still founded on the tech buzz, but we call it the TTB network. 
So we're branching out past technology because I have I host the show Weekly Roundup, which is all about tech. We we find you know the the I guess what we find as the best tech news of the week, and we just roundtable it, just kind of like what you guys did earlier, and we talk about what our thoughts are, give our you know synopsis of it. And then I do a show called Broadcast Now where we cover everything to do with broadcasting. We bring on industry professionals, other internet broadcasters. Um, we've had guys on like Brian Brushwood and and, and different people like that. Nice. Uh, we've had some guys from the Pixel Core because they're really heavy into broadcasting just to basically give a platform for folks that are trying to get into this internet broadcasting and they think it's overwhelming to give them a, a, an outlet to kind of learn and say, look, this is what we did and we made a mistake here. Don't do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to kind of document that as we go. And this is where we kind of branched out where now I do a sports show. I don't host it. I just produce it. And uh, the girl that hosts it, she's a, she's an all American and uh, she's a uh, third in the nation as far as shot put and discus. And uh, she's she's been interviewing some of the biggest coaches in the United States, as well as some of the, the Olympians that are in that sport. Um, cool. And so she's trying to help other kids that are it's to, for a sport that's not really heavily recognized. And it's it's really a niche. And we've seen the numbers grow and grow every week with this. And so I'm, I'm branching Woods? out. Yes, that's Christy Woods. Okay. And um, I've been <laughs> just been branching out and trying, like we talked about that political show that we're trying to do, just trying to do something else as a network and, and not just strictly gearing everything toward tech. So that's where we came up with, well, the Tech Buzz name's already known, so let's just abbreviate it and call it the TTB network. So we're not saying it's tech. It's a you know, it's founded on the tech buzz, uh, but it's yeah, the TTB, TTB. Yeah, that way it's it will encompass a lot, a lot of exactly. other different subjects and topics, right? Uh, yep, it's clever Good stuff. Stuff. Okay, Paul. Any questions for Steve? Um, we need to wrap up very soon. Uh, Paul, no, not such. <laughs> all right, Daddy. Uh, um, Steve, where can they get hold of you and stuff? And then I'm through on that. Um, you can find me uh, just the techbuzz.net or ttbn.tv. Um, either one will lead and you can find um, everything about me there. Um, we have a Roku channel so if you want to watch it live on your TV in the Aww, cool. room, you can go download the TTBN um, TTB network application should I, be there. I have to ask you, did you make that Roku app or did you hire someone to do it? Or Because I know it's it's free to go there and you know and, and create your own channels and and they teach you kind of, or they have that on their Roku.com website, which I think is so great. But yeah, no, this is a legit app that um, we had to follow their guidelines to get it into the actual app store. It's not like a private channel or anything. So if mm -hmm. you, you go to their actual front on your Roku to get it, awesome. um, I have a, a buddy of mine that I hang out with and who has his own business uh, with web design and, and things like that, where he makes Roku apps for folks. And so um, I was able to get a really good price on it and, uh, Basically, he does a lot of just because I don't have the time. I, you know, I've kind of hired him to kind of do upkeep on my website and things like that. Which we're actually in the process of redoing the whole website, brand new from scratch. Uh, so we're hoping to launch that later this year. But um, yeah, he's really, really good. So uh, he did the Roku app. Cool. I'm gonna check that out. Okay, you can get me on Twitter, Brad Dawson. Quick, well, guys, Andrew, what's your final view of this show and stuff? And the power went out. That sucked big time. Yeah, really. Yeah, no, really good show. Um, thanks for being on, Steve. It's, it's it's great to have you on and and uh, great to have a chat. Yep. And um, yeah, you can grab me at zafo.com forward slash at Andrew or on Facebook and Twitter, Cunning Drew. Stuff. Okay. Well, what about you, mate? We're gonna, we're gonna get hold of you. Uh, you can get me on YouTube, uh, PKTV, um, and. Uh, Peak Area 12 for Twitter and uh, Google Plus. Nice one. Okay, good one. Okay, uh, Jennifer, what about you? Getting ready with it? And yeah, so people can find uh, me at jenniferruggiero.com and check out my podcast at getnerdywithit.com. Also, techanarchy.com. Check that one out as well. So, a uh, great okay. show tonight. Thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. And Steve, what about you? Which one? Uh, you? Oh, me. You? Okay. I don't know. I don't know if it uh, told Steve first. Uh, you can find me at uh, chatterbox underscore live. 
And of course, the uh, live uh, tech webcast version here on uh, justin.tv forward slash Linux cool dude. All right, good stuff. And you also, you're going to send me that audio file too, yeah, Steve. Well. Get... Yep. Okay. Uh, we got that's... to the very last minute without having a Steve mix up. <laughs> well, I did and also, my own mix up. Also, shout out to uh, MBC Foods, uh, Andrew. He's, they sent me some salt and a uh, salt, salt grinder this week. Yeah, they did. MB Foods, uh, very cool equipment. Have you set that up yet, Brad? I have, mate. Yeah, it looks, tastes great. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. So MB Foods, salt, salt grinder, all of your delicatessen needs. That's it. MBC Foods, mate. Check it out. Vincent, Vincent Brown. Shout out to him. And yeah, You're making me hungry. What's salt? Oh, I thought you said sandwich. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this has been a okay, crazy show, guys. I oh, appreciate it. Thanks, Steve, from, te- from, from the uh, Tech Buzz. Thanks. Thanks for having me. No problem, mate. Hi, Glenn from Aussie Tech Heads. Join Will, Eric, and myself as we bring you the latest, most up-to-date, important tech news that affects you from Australia and the world. A weekly podcast available each Friday through iTunes. Watch the live stream recording of the show at live.thesecrethub.com each Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. or GMT plus 10. Call in live via Skype or chat in our lounge. However you get us, just make sure you do. Listen or visit our website for more information, www.aussietechheads.com. Tom.au, Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's longest running tech news podcast. Well, that's it for Tech Webcast this week. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed having your mind expanded. Tune in next week for more tech talk with Brad, Jason, and whatever crazy guests they've managed to rope in. Don't forget to get the Tech Webcast app from iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at Tech Webcast. And of course, check us out on Facebook too. Until next time, may the tech be with you. Peace!